Hey there! So uh, today I'm going to be doing my cocktail book collection. I um, just pretty much have my stack of books here and I'm going to go through each one and just some thoughts about it and whether I've read it yet and what I think and if I would recommend it. So the first book I have was the first cocktail book I ever bought. Um, this is called The Ultimate Bar Book, The Comprehensive Guide to Over 1,000 Cocktails by Mitty Helmich. And I got this very early in my cocktail journey. I just think I saw it was like the best, one of the best sellers on Amazon. Um, and it was pretty cheap, so I got it and it is just full of recipes. So when I first started out, this was a good resource for me to kind of like look up things without having to just like search the web. But this is definitely one that I do not feel the need to have in my collection anymore. And I think a lot of these recipes, they seem kind of dated or, um, you know, not really to like at the caliber or the type of cocktails that I really like making now, which is more focused on the classic recipes, modern classics, and things like you would kind of find at the speakeasy or fancy talk to the cocktail bars. This is the book that really got it started for me. This is The Bar Book by Jeffrey Mordendaler. I got this, um, just picked it up on a whim after I saw it in a bookstore and this was like the best investment of my life or in terms of cocktails. So this book is all about technique and really teaches you about the hows and whys of cocktails and why they're made a certain way, how you make it, how you stir, how you shake, you know, why is ice important, why is citrus important, the different types of ways to use citrus or ice or garnishes and things like that. And this is an absolutely my top recommendation for anyone looking to uh, get into cocktails. After I got that book, uh, while it was really great for techniques, there aren't really that many recipes in it. So I was really looking to find a book that had more recipes once I kind of knew the basics of technique. And uh, the Death & Co book definitely fit the bill. This is a beautiful book. Uh, it's perfect just, I guess, a coffee table book as well. It kind of has this cloth type of um, cover on it. And it is filled with, you know, wonderful photos, uh, recipes, and it talks about, you know, technique as well, uh, how to set up a bar, different types of spirits, and uh, a lot of fantastic recipes. They kind of read like a cocktail menu almost, you know, how you see um, the list of like fancy ingredients laid out really nice on a cocktail menu. It kind of looks like that in the book, except they tell you exactly what ingredients, how much of each you need, and how to make it. So. This is fantastic, and I would highly recommend this. A great book for recipes is this. This is the PDT, Please Don't Tell Cocktail Book by Jim Meehan. So this one is just an encyclopedia of recipes. While the Death & Co, I feel like it's more of a mix of all things about modern classic cocktails, uh, this one is has a little bit of that, but it's really primarily focused on recipes. And it has a great mix of the classic recipes as well as more modern recipes. And I actually love this book for as a reference whenever I need to make something. And there's actually an app for this on iOS, so if you just look up PDT Cocktails, there's an amazing app that is like a digital version of the more majority of the recipes in this book. And that is great when, you know, you don't want to necessarily get out a paper book and you just want to look it up on your phone. The next book I have here is the Amaro book by uh, Brad Parsons, Brad Thomas Parsons. Amaro is basically like a Italian liqueur that's bittersweet and it's been gaining a lot of popularity in the cocktail world. This book uh, talks all about bitters, or like bitter Amaro, the different type of spirits out there, the history of Amaro, how they're used traditionally, and also has like great tasting notes on a large number of the Amaro that is on the market today. So you can kind of look it up and start building a stronger understanding of the variety. 
if you ever go to Italy, you'll see that Amaro like are everywhere in every coffee shop uh, or bar. You know, they'll have a large array of different types of these bittersweet liqueurs that all have, you know, very traditional labels. The selection really varies depending on which region you're in. This is a great book uh, that really breaks it down and gives you uh, a great starting point to understanding some of the large variety out there. Next book I have here is this one. This is Potions of the Caribbean by Jeff Berry. So this is an amazing book for uh, understand all about the history of tiki from the very early days, what rums that were drank by very traditional native people on the islands all the way up to mid-century tiki drinks. This reads like a history book. It pretty much captures the events that happened in history throughout the rum drinking areas, primarily in the Caribbean and also later on in California as the tiki movement picked up. Explains what happened through the lens of rum, if that makes sense. Jeff Berry is the historian uh, who really like single-handedly brought back and rediscovered a lot of the Tiki recipes that went missing, I guess, after Tiki movement kind of started dying in like the 70s and 80s. And he basically rediscovered a lot of those recipes and, um, you know, this is one of his great books. I think he has like five or six different books. So I really recommend that to people who are really into history. The next book I have here is this one. This is The Craft of the Cocktail um, by Dale DeGroff. This one is okay. It's one of the earlier books that I got. Dale DeGroff is one of like the early pioneers in American cocktail history. It just has a bunch of the recipes and it's okay. Like I feel like a lot of the recipes in here seem a little bit dated. Um, not necessarily things that I would really go for. Things like the old fashioned, but like mudslide. You know, like different types of margarita, bloody margarita, Cadillac margarita, ginger mule, godfather, golden Cadillac. I don't know. It's okay. I think it's not my, like I probably wouldn't get it again, but yeah. <laughs> All right. The next one here is the Smuggler's Cove book by Martin Kate. And along with The Bar Book by Jeffrey Morgenthaler, this is one of the life-changing books that has completely made a huge difference in my life in terms of uh, the type of drinks that I like learning about and having. And like, before I got this book, I was really not into tiki at all. Um, I didn't really like the super like fruity or sweet drinks. And I kind of associated tiki with um, that kind of drinks. Lover's Cove is a bar in San Francisco and it's probably one of the premier tiki bars in the world. This book really talks about the history of rum, um, history of tiki in a very concise manner, different aspects of tiki culture, and also has a ton of fantastic photos and recipes uh, for many of the like great tiki drinks. So this also was the book that convinced me to look more into rum and give it a second chance. And uh, it really explains the large variety of rums in, that are out there, the different cl classifications of them, and, you know, really helps dispel some of the myths and common misconceptions about rum as a spirit. And this is an absolutely fantastic book that I would recommend to anyone and I would probably like gift this to everyone <laughs> if I could. that I have here is this one. This is Rum Curious by uh, Fred Minnick. So I got this because it was like on sale for like three or four dollars on Amazon. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, it's about rum and I'm pretty like rum obsessed. So I figured why not? And uh, this is a great read. I feel like it does a great job at explaining some of the basic concepts of rum, varieties of rum, and things like that. Didn't really have any information I 
didn't already know uh, for the most part, but it did a great job at just kind of really cataloging and pulling together a lot of the really valuable information on rum that's out there, especially for people who are pretty like newer to the spirit or don't haven't really had too many rums other than you know like Captain Morgan's, Bacardi, Gosling's, you know, etc. Um, it also does have a whole section that talks about tasting notes on a, a large variety of different rums. Um, those are, they're kind of subjective since they're just um, Fred's opinions, but uh, it does give you like a general idea, especially if you're just at the store and you see all the different rums and you don't know which ones to get. The next two books I have here, they're the David Rundrich books. Uh, one is Imbibe, this one and this one is Punch. So I got these books because uh, I went to an event that David Wondrich was at at a bookstore and he was just kind of talking about Punch and then after that I was like, oh, well I've been wanting to kind of pick up these books for a while so I just went ahead and got both. I haven't really read them yet because I'm still working on the Bush in the Caribbean one. David Wondrich is one of the premier cocktail historians who has done a ton of research and a lot of the information that we know and understand about you know, original pre-prohibition, prohibition era cocktails, you know, were gathered from David's research. So this one kind of discusses the history of punch and you know, how punch was a really critical part of culture and part of social life and uh, talked about the different types of varieties of punches that were made and also has like recipes for how you can kind of recreate them. Imbibe is more about, you know, general like evolution of American mixology, you know, starting from the classics and how it kind of grew and became what it is today. The next book here I have is the Mezcal book by Emma Jansen. This is fantastic. So mezcal is a spirit. It's kind of like a, people say it's like a smoky version of tequila, um, but it's basically, basically a spirit made from the agave plant uh, in a slightly different way from how many tequilas are made and also uses the different species of agave from tequila. It's really known for its smoky qualities because it's kind of oftentimes it's smoked underground uh, as part of the production process. Uh, but anyway, so this book kind of talks about the variety of different mezcals uh, it has beautiful photos and a ton of like moder very modern recipes uh, using mezcals. So for me, who didn't really know much about mezcal, this was a fantastic primer to really learn more about the spirit. And I feel like mezcal is one of those spirits that's a little bit more expensive, so I always I was always very hesitant to kind of pick up a bottle on a whim. It was kind of hard to read the label. Usually, there's a lot of information on the labels. Uh, and I didn't know what species were better than others. And at, you know, like 60, 50, 70 bucks a bottle, it was kind of hard to just shoot in the dark. But this one helped uh, kind of give a really good intro into the spirit so I could at least start kind of trying to navigate around it and figuring out which ones I want to try um, that might be a little bit different from things I already have. The next book I have here is this one. This is Drinking the Devil's Acre, uh, a love letter from San Francisco and her cocktails by Duggan Mac McDonald. I live in San Francisco and this book is all about the history of some key cocktails that were invented or have significance to San Francisco. The style of writing is really like a love letter. It's very poetic and it talks about, uh, I think there's like a list of maybe 10 or some number of cocktails that have a strong ties to San Francisco. It discusses their history, how it kind of came about, how to kind of recreate it, what's the right way to create it. And I think this, you know, just living in San Francisco, it's something that's really interesting for me to, to know, um, just to kind of learn. I'm not originally from San Francisco, but other than that, I wouldn't say it's like a must have book. And the last book I have here is not necessarily a cocktail book, uh, it's the Flavor Bible. It talks about different flavors and what they pair well with. So for example, uh, you know, if I want to make something that has, uh, you know, honey, right? So it talks about what kind of flavors pair well with honey. You know, almonds, apricots, ginger, grapes, grape cuisine, m you know, mint, guava, ham. You know, I might not, like some of those things I might not think of, like honey and 
coconut. Like I might not have thought about that, but you know, it's a great inspiration for like if I want to try a new cocktail that combines some new interesting flavor combinations. Great way to have the inspiration. Um, so that's all the ones I have right now. There's definitely a lot more on my list. I'm just trying to make my way through, you know, reading all of them. If you're looking for a new book, maybe you'll pick up one of those. Uh, let me know what your favorite cocktail books are.